Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today sitting down for a good old fashioned Starfield discussion video. Today we're talking about the ever mysterious Starfield release date. After the delay of Starfield, a lot of guesses have been tossed around about when this game may be coming out. And now we have a fan theory that's gaining a lot of traction online that I wanted to talk about in today's video. Because I've noticed through the feedback I've been gathering over the past couple of weeks, one thing a lot of you all want to see is more discussion videos, particularly with Starfield. Now, I don't want to go back to Fallout 4 days, Maddie, where I'm flicking out speculation videos every other day. That was a different era of Maddie, and I don't think it's entertaining or, quite frankly, interesting at this point in time as we've evolved the content. But when I see something like this gaining a lot of traction, I thought, well, let me sit down and talk about it. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're new here, you're into Bethesda content, Xbox content, Starfield content, you're in the right place. We're having a lot of videos on all those sorts of things here on the channel. So consider checking them out. And with that, let's talk about Starfield. This release date is something that's a big talking point for the Xbox and Bethesda community because we're all wondering when this big open space game is going to finally hit. And it looks like, thanks to my good friend, Lone Vault Wanderer, we had the start of a most fascinating theory. And I love that this starts with Lone, right? Just on a personal note, we talked about the Fallout 4 days ever so briefly just a couple of moments ago. The fact that speculation like this is starting with Lone is just an amazing full circle moment. So it's really cool to see. But anyway, he posted what was a really awesome Easter egg that he found in the Starfield gameplay reveal on his Twitter account, where he says, here's a cool Easter egg in the Starfield trailer. The number on the spaceship, SV821393, is the same as the US patent of the Wright Brothers flying machine, number 821393. This was the very first successful motor operated airplane in the world very fitting for starfield and as you can see in this screenshot here when you land on crete in the beginning of the gameplay reveal there it is sv821393 now i want to start off by just saying that it's totally in bethesda's realm to put hidden teasers that you probably would not think much about in the middle of their trailers i'm talking about like potentially what was hammerfell just etched into the side of a computer terminal in Starfield's initial reveal. One of the most insane catches I think we've ever seen in trailer history was in Starfield's reveal, putting an Elder Scrolls 6 teaser, the smallest, tiniest one, right? So to me, I'm fully willing to entertain Bethesda putting something that small in here that could mean something much larger. So when I saw Lone's Theory, I thought, okay, cool. Fans took it a step further, and when fans took it a step further, I saw outlets like PC Gamer and PC Games N actually covering it and really bringing some true media attention to it. And that's what kind of spurred me to say, all right, well, I'll throw my hat in the ring. Let's talk about it. So here's where the theory gets pretty bizarre. As we mentioned, there is a patent that was submitted by the Wright brothers. Now, when was that patent submitted? In March 1903, specifically March 23rd. Now, what's fascinating about this is that people think with the application going through, and you can see it right here on the Google Patents on the right side of the screen, 32303. Pretty crazy stuff. And this all comes through a theory posted on Reddit by Balrog229, who mentions also some of our speculation on the Defining Duke Ultimate episode we did focusing on Starfield, which was also really cool to see because Defining Duke throughout all of this surprisingly got some shout outs and we love to see that we're trying to grow the show so a thank you for that but where i want to start my theorizing on whether or not this could be accurate of a 32323 release date is i think you take a look at redfall first because wherever redfall comes out i think it squeezes down starfield's window right now the word and we just have to trust microsoft xbox bethesda's word which it's up to you how much you want to trust it, given that they said it was coming out this November, it being Starfield, and then they delayed it. They say that everything we saw at the Xbox Bethesda Showcase in June was releasing within the next 12 months, meaning by June of next year, everything we saw should be out by that time, given everything rolls nice and smoothly. So to me, I think when you looked at the current release slate, which was Redfall was coming out at the end of the summer, so September the latest, and Starfield was set to come out on November 11th, it meant Redfall was coming first. So we moved both these games into the first half of 2023, and I think if Redfall were to, say, come out in February, then Starfield could only come out after February. 
So for me, I think it's finding out Redfall's date is key in figuring out when exactly Starfield will release and shrinking that window down. With that, my speculation on Redfall is it's ready sooner rather than later. They continue to talk about this game. Contrary to what is happening with Starfield, where Todd Howard did like one or two interviews, and as in Bethesda Game Studio style, they pieced out until they have more to say. We'll talk about when I think we're going to hear more on Starfield, but when it comes to Redfall, IGN just did a big interview on this game, going through tons and tons of details about story progression, branching story paths, what this game plays like, what this game feels like, so on and so forth, like major gameplay details. And that's like the third or fourth one I've seen of Redfall. That's a separate brand new interview. So they're more willing to talk about this game, explain things, show it off. I got a brand new trailer with new gameplay. So clearly this one is closer to ready than Starfield, but also it's hard to gauge at times because again, Bethesda's MO is to go off the grid until they're really close to a reveal. However, when it comes to Redfall, I think because it's showing more, it's talking more, my guess is, and this isn't going to help our window, sadly, is January. I think it's ideal for all parties involved. Like, Redfall would, at that point, get presumably a four to five month delay. Then, also, Xbox would have at the top of the year, for once, a major exclusive. So, I'm sure they would be happy to have that. They're very hands-off with their studio. So, my assumption is they would look at that release date and go, like, okay, cool. Sounds great to us. All right, let's launch it then. So... To me, I think that won't help, but for those who have different forms of speculation on Redfall and when it comes out, I think that's something you need to consider when trying to figure out Starfield's date. So with my speculation out there on Redfall's date, we still have the same window, January to June. It doesn't really change much, although I think it's end of January, so really February to June, because I don't think these two are going to stack on top of each other. There's no need for that to happen whatsoever. And you also need to consider Forza Motorsport in the mix there, but Xbox has shown a willingness to completely stampede their own releases with putting out Forza Horizon 5 and then dropping Halo Infinite's early access multiplayer, which completely sucked the air out of the room for a very successful Forza game. But I could go on. Let's get back on track with Starfield. So yes, the speculation is 32323. Three, two, three. Why is that outside of the patent? That's a Todd Howard-ass date, as we like to call it, right? The 11-11-11. 11, 11, 15. They like these types of dates where they share the same numbers. Todd Howard actually goes into why this is the case in an IGN interview. So listen to this clip and then we have more dates to suggest because it doesn't just stop at 3, 2, 3, 2, 3. 11, 11, 11. If you were here in the company, there were a lot of release dates being bandied around and I was unmovable. I was like, <laughs> this is the perfect date. Come on. Um, and then as it came around to Starfield, we lined things up and adding buffer where things, it kind of landed you know, around there was like, hey, this would feel really, really good. Yeah. There's a weird wrinkle in it. Okay. Which is in Europe versus North America, they flip the days. It's true. So there's always this, when you're doing advertising stuff, if the day and the month are the same, you don't have to change it, which is this great <laughs> added benefit. I thought it looked really cool in the trailer too. So. so yeah, they actually like this date because not only is it like, come on, that's just awesome, but it seems like there's a slight subtle marketing benefit where everyone has the same date in mind. It's not flipping around. They don't have to consider that stuff. It's just the same number, the same year for all parties, which is, I can understand, a added benefit. Two things, three, two, three, two, three, wouldn't really offer that for Bethesda, but... What you have to also consider is where this whole entire theory is based off of is this patent that was submitted by the Wright brothers. And where I think things get twisted up is when they were granted the U.S. patent for 823393, that was actually on May 22nd, 1906, because they were originally rejected in 1904. So having it be the 120th anniversary of the filing of the application, it actually wasn't granted until... May 22nd, three years later. So does this theory really hold much water? I don't think so. I think, yes, that it's plausible Todd Howard would like this type of date, but as the game studios in their history would like this type of date. But I think rooting it in this patent is probably just over investigating what is a mere Easter egg. However, there are counter offers there. There is two, two, three, two, three. There is two, three, two, three. I mean, there is just a lot of different ways we could spill out this date. Not only that, but there are a lot of anniversaries you could consider. When I was combing through this Reddit post, seeing other people's speculation, they mentioned March 7th was the day of the first orbital telescope and observatory. Then March 18th was the first spacewalk anniversary. So there's a lot of anniversaries in March that have to do with space that you could also use 
in March is also that Oblivion energy. I've said this from day one that Starfield gives me Oblivion energy. Y'all can go ahead, check the footage, check the tapes. Maddie is on record of saying on multiple occasions from the get-go, Oblivion vibes here. Between even the spiritual ones like the delay and the possible release in March, I could see them having some more Oblivion energy here and releasing in March. However, what I do think will likely happen here is if we want to go ahead and keep our fair marketing date, if you will, of the same number for the day and month, then I got to go and turn to the speculation of my good friend, Lone Vault Wanderer, where he did 6623 at the end of the window of the first half of 2023, because this would give Bethesda the maximum amount of time. And I think that's really important they get that because Starfield looks like and has said to be an extremely ambitious game. And I think when I look back at, this will sound obscure at first, The Outer Worlds, and how one of the biggest surprises for many people with an Obsidian video game was that The Outer Worlds at launch was really well polished. And that can go a long way, a long, long way in buyer confidence, in your review scores, of course, when your game isn't breaking left and right. And for Bethesda, of course, having a reputation of very buggy video games, my God, would it do them some serious favors to take as much time as possible polishing this thing. And I think the reality here is the release date is when it's ready. I could also see a reality where Starfield gets delayed into the second half of 2023. We need to learn from Halo Infinite. That is what needs to happen here. I know Halo Infinite is a game that was in development hell. They were going to release it in 2020. We got it in 2021 at the end of the year. It was good at launch. Its post-launch support has been lacking. I know it's a very different situation, but the reality is if Xbox had a little bit of foresight, and I know some of it was limited, like with the war in Ukraine, taking out Stalker 2, a beginning of the year timed exclusive, there's certain things they couldn't anticipate. But otherwise, their beginning of the year was completely empty with exclusives, where if Halo Infinite needed another delay, they did not need to cash in on the anniversary date and what happened was because there was so much pressure by fans by the way saying just release it just release it just release it i think they put that game out way too soon and while it is one of the best playing halo games it did not have enough content ready for the type of game it was ready to be for starfield the type of game this needs to be is an open world epic unlike anything we've seen before that is highly polished and is a statement from xbox and bethesda combined to fans and publishers all around the world that when you work with us when you play our games you're getting the best type of content to achieve that you need to release this game when it's ready not when it's right when it feels good because that is a finite moment in what is something that will last forever. Starfield will forever be cemented in history, and they want to do that in a positive manner. So to me, we have to accept the realistic possibility that this game can be in the second half of 2023. This has to be, and I encourage fans to take this type of mindset and this energy and really put it out there as excited as I am. Y'all know me. I love Bethesda Game Studios games. I play them forever, okay? I'm there with you. I want this thing like mad, but you know, we got to put that energy out there. Take your damn time. Do not rush this thing. We cannot have this being another buggy, broken mess like 76. We need this to be triumphant. This is a brand new IP. It's a different type of energy. So to me, I think, yes, the more alluring one would be a 5523, a 6623, where you could have that interchangeable date and month and you'd be just fine. But to me, the most important thing of them all is Bethesda puts the game out when it's ready. When will we hear about it though? When's the next update? You know, I'm still putting my chips on the table for QuakeCon. I feel like QuakeCon this year is going to be big for Bethesda. I feel like with the 25th anniversary of Fallout, with Starfield in the mix and probably being timed up for a new update there, with Redfall in the mix, with id being mighty quiet, I think it's time to hear from all these different developers on smaller updates like in the realm of Starfield and Redfall, but also bigger ones like in the case of id where that's their conference, right? And I think Bethesda could put together a tight, interesting show, maybe with a little Fallout re-release package to just, you know, 
send fans like me home happy, being like, hey, by the way, to celebrate the 25th anniversary, here's what we're doing. But to me, my eyes are on QuakeCon and when we'll hear things about Starfield next. There is Gamescom, which is happening just after QuakeCon, but I feel like Xbox would be wise to say, Bethesda, do your thing over at QuakeCon. We'll do our thing with the like, Game Pass and Xbox Game Studios over at Gamescom, and we'll have like a week-long marketing cycle, incidentally. I think that could benefit them as well. So to me, that's what I'm looking for, QuakeCon. That's in the middle of August, so keep your eyes out then. Certainly, I'll be reminding you in future conversations. But right now, this is a fun fan theory. I wouldn't be surprised if it came out in March, because I think that makes a lot of sense with all the oblivion energy in the air surrounding Starfield. However, for me, when it's ready. If it ends up being April, cool. If it ends up being May, cool. If it ends up being June, cool. And I hate to say it, if it ends up being next November, cool. I want this game to blow me away. I will wait as long as it takes. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, fire away down below. What are your theories for Starfield's release date? Do you like what you saw here? Fire away. And with that, I will catch you in the next video. Stay sexy. Stay active. I love you all. Peace.